Hello and welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott once again. Today we're going to talk about how to make a QNAP NAS secure. So QNAP NAS units have been in the news due to brute force attacks and ransomware which encrypts user data. The threat surface of a network is defined by the number of places where it can be attacked due to exposed services. QNAP NASs are designed to offer services which can be either for your local LAN access or access from the public internet. All systems have vulnerabilities and really the only truly secure system is the one that's still on order and not yet installed. So what is QNAP doing? Well, QNAP provides a constant stream of QTS and QTS security and performance patches designed to make the underlying operating system of a QNAP NAS more secure. QNAP regularly provides patches and updates for its Q packages, which are the applications that you install from the QTS web admin interface. QNAP has provided a new application called Security Counselor to evaluate settings on a QNAP NAS which might be less secure. QNAP also provides a malware remover and an antivirus scanner that can be installed and configured by the end user. So where are the vulnerabilities? Well, security is always at odds with functionality and flexibility on any system. The MyQNAP Cloud application provides a means to remotely manage and also offer services via a very convenient QNAP provided cloud portal. By default, MyQNAP Cloud uses universal plug and play to open an application port on your router for access. UPnP is insecure and only exists as a convenient way to configure end devices for novice users. So, my suggestion is to turn off UPnP on your network router. In my case, I have a Ubiquiti Unify UDM Pro where I go into settings, I go into services, I go to UPnP and I disable UPnP and I save the changes. Secondly, you want to disable UPnP port forwarding on my QNAP Cloud by going into the My QNAP Cloud application on the NAS, going to Auto Router Configuration, disabling the Enable UPnP port forwarding checkbox and save that. Finally, you want to turn off your My QNAP Cloud link. The My QNAP Cloud link has been an attack vector in several QNAP NAS systems because it's a way of offering services outside of your local area network. So under My QNAP Cloud application, go to My QNAP Cloud link, disable it, and save that. So then we also want to not publish services. It's a little redundant, but go down to Publish Services on the My QNAP Cloud link, deselect everything in the Publish box, and save that. So then you want to also secure user accounts. So all user accounts on QNAP that have admin privilege should be configured with two-factor authentication login. And here's an example of where that's done. So if you go into the My QNAP Cloud desktop, or not, not the QNAP Cloud desktop, but if you go into the QNAP desktop, QTS desktop, and you go to your username and you click on that pull-down menu, go to options and this options screen will pop up. You can go over to two-factor verification and you can set your two-factor authentication, which normally uses Google Authenticator, time-based one-time passwords, or you can use the same time-based one-time passwords in Bitwarden. Then QNAP has an application called QNAP Security Counselor. Well, you want to run Security Counselor for information. First of all, it has a thing called Security Checkup, and that goes in and looks at various things that may be vulnerabilities, and it classifies them into low, medium, or high risk, letting you know which things that you might want to change, or at least making you aware of them. Secondly, um, this is a place that determine or shows you whether your 
antivirus is turned on or turned off, you want to turn it on and set a reasonable schedule. Nightly is a good idea. And then you want to have uh, the malware remover also enabled for the same kind of reason as the antivirus. And then finally, um, QNAP has an application called Q Firewall to actually protect the device and open ports. But I, I do all my uh, uh, protection on the network with my trusted network and my network level management. So I don't really use this. In a business environment, you might find that Q Firewall would be a very valuable utility if you wanted to configure and secure just the QNAP node. So we want to secure your services. So the, the, the basic premise is only offer services where they're actually needed. And as an example of that is that if you go into control panel and you go to network and file services and you go to network access, you can see that there's several services that it can be offered on the NAS. Um, these first three columns really relate to adapters one and three, one and two, which I have teamed together on my trusted network, and that's why everything's turned on. Um, the last two are VLANs, and most of the services are turned off because they're VLANs. So how do we use my services? Well, I create a dedicated VLAN on my network called IoT and another dedicated VLAN for my hosted services. And I recommend you do the same thing on your network. I've had some videos which have talked about this actual same subject. So you wanna make it so that the IoT VLAN and the hosted services VLAN cannot initiate any communication with your trusted LAN. Use Container Station and Virtualization Station to create and offer containerized services. Create a container for WireGuard VPN access and don't use QVPN. So one of the vulnerabilities that has existed in the past is that there was a compromise made to QVPN. And since it runs on the higher level NAS operating system, it produced vulnerabilities on the QNAP overall. So I have a, uh, another video out there that talks about how to create a container, a VM actually, for WireGuard VPN, and it goes through step-by-step -step how to do that. So then you want to also use Nginx Reverse Proxy Manager or traffic as end or as edge services to protect access to your hosted applications. They only open ports 443 and 80 to your reverse proxy service, and that edge reverse proxy service is where you would reference all apps from the reverse proxy to either LexD, Docker, or VM containers for security and also to limit service use on the QNAP. You want to use 2FA on your hosted services, even though they run inside of containers. If you build a container, run a container out there that offers 2FA, avail yourself of the option and use 2FA. It only can increase your security. And vulnerabilities exist on any commercial NAS. It doesn't matter if we're talking about QNAP or Synology or Western Digital. Um, it also exists on, on RAID and Proxmox and FreeNAS and any other server device, really, because of the default settings on those devices and also because users haven't spent a lot of time to understand the service offerings, requirements, and potential vulnerabilities. Um, you can have the argument that, well, QNAP's introduced some, some bugs in the past and some vulnerabilities, but they've always announced those, and you should be aware of those on a constant basis So uh, to understand when you should either not use that service or use a different service or patch the service. So what QNAP services do I use? Well, I use Container Station for application, isolation, and performance. I use Virtualization Station for application isolation for apps that I cannot run inside of LexD or Docker for one reason or the other. And then I use Hybrid Backup and Sync to backup data on my trusted network or to remote systems via a site-to-site -site VPN so I know it's secure. And I do file sharing via SIFS, NFS, and iSCSI, but only on my trusted LAN. So these other VLANs where I am 
offering services out to the public internet or hosting IoT, I'm not running file services there because they're an attack vector that's unneeded. And QVR Pro, well, I really like that application because it's a great network video recorder and that's one of the main apps that I use. And finally, I have a Plex media server that runs on the main uh, QNAP NAS because it needs access to massive data stores on the NAS file system. But that being said, I isolate it to a particular um, folder structure for media. And then I use SyncThing, which is a free and open source software because it replicates selected client folders on the NAS. And I like it better than QSync Central, which is the QNAP utility to do the same type of thing. I've just used it over the years and I eventually moved to SyncThing. And then core tools, obviously, like network and virtual switch, storage and snapshots, iSCSI and fiber channel, the malware remover and the virus scanner. Yeah, you have to avail yourself of those core functions. So in summary, securing your network and file services is your responsibility, and it's not the OEM's responsibility from which you buy the server. There are always options to run less vulnerable services. There are always ways to reduce your threat surface. Blindly assuming that any vendor is providing you with a secure device is kind of like assuming that the gun is empty. So my choices for security differ from yours because your security needs are probably different. The things I've described here work a little bit better for the home lab and work less so for a company or small business. QNAP is not inherently secure because of the choices that end users make. Security is an ongoing job that changes as threats change. Anyway, thanks for coming by today and please subscribe and like to the channel and we'll see you next time.